You're welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. Today's Friday, Bible Talks. I hope you have your shouting clothes tonight. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that notification bell and share. The show is available Mondays, Wednesdays and Friday. 20 hours Central African time. Monday show is for political discussions. Uh, Wednesday show is for the educative segment and Friday is for Bible Talks like today. So I know we've been doing a series on the gifts of the spirit or the manifestation of the spirit as the King James calls it. And we've discussed a couple of gifts so far. We started late last year and I told you we'd be having different men of God come into studio to discuss this uh, particular subject with me. And so we had Prophet Gomezio, Apostle Frederick. And uh, today we are taking a bit of a deviation from the gifts of the spirit we are discussing a different subject that i believe the lord is leading me towards discussing for the benefit of many people i've been having a lot of conversations lately with different people from different walks of life about god and it's my view that the enemy is really trying to shift the attention of people especially the young believer from god to uh other circumstances, people, disappointments. Generally, people's hearts are growing cold towards God because of negative circumstances, negative stories that they're hearing. And it's upon my heart to help someone out there rediscover their pursuit for God by developing a curiosity for God himself. I believe this curiosity for God, this Desire for God fuels whatever hunger we have spiritually. And so, yeah, we're taking a deviation today from the gifts of the Spirit and we're discussing the subject of God. Where did God come from? Now, the show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, on as a podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and will soon be available on Penga Play. We'll let you know uh, on that with time. Yes, yeah, so growing up as a kid, I always wondered, where did God come from? You know, the Bible just begins with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How do we explain God? How come it sits well with us when we hear, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth? Okay, hold up. Who's God's father? Who's God's auntie? Does God come from a community? Wait, did God grow up? Does God have friends? The Bible tells us that God is one. O ye Israel, the Lord your God is one. So God himself says, there is no other beside me. Right? So then how do we explain this individual that we just knew as God, who we now know by many names, and we finally know his name, Jesus, right? How do we explain God and where he comes from, his origins? Maybe we should title this one, The Origins of God. What do you think? Yeah, so once again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that notification bell and share and let us discuss the origins of God. I want to tell you the exact location, the exact city, the exact town, the province where God came from. Yeah, Genesis chapter one, verse four to five. And God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, before God created anything, here's an important question to ask yourself before you begin to wonder where God came from. Before God created anything, before he created the heavens and the earth, where was he? Where did he dwell? 
before he created the heavens or heaven as we know it and the earth. Because if you are creating this cup, then you are definitely outside of it, right? I live in Zambia and I created a cup in which my coffee resides just before it gets into my stomach. So God had a location before he created these locations we refer to as the heavens and the earth. And I show you this particular scripture because it tells us of God when, of, of when God divided the light from the darkness, the day from the night, and the evening and morning he called the first day. Okay, hold up. So then, before he created the first day, how would you know just how long God had lived for? If we begin to measure days by this day one, then how are we going to know how many days God has lived for? You see, the understanding that we live by in our present existence, known as earth, is that everything should have a beginning and an end. Because in our world, we give birth to babies. We know where they came from. Some of our parents when we were young pointed at shops saying, this is where I bought you. I'll take you back if you're being naughty. Now, God did not have days. As a matter of fact, the Bible refers to him as the ancient of days because days themselves, when they look at him, call him ancient. Because before the measurement of days had been thought of, before it came up, the whole concept of measuring duration by days, God was there. God himself created the days by dividing the light from the darkness, the day from the night, the morning from the evening, and he called it the first day. So before the first day, we do not know how many days God had lived for. The reason I bring this to your attention be is because when we talk about the measurement of day as a division of the night and day, as a division of the light and darkness, this is an introduction, the first introduction we see in the Bible of time. And because of this introduction of time, we begin to realize that things have a start and they have a stop. So God himself, who created time, lives in a world that is separate from the concept of time. The way we understand existence is not the way existence is in God's world. God's world is defined by a different kind of existence. Because in this world, our existence is defined by the start and the finish of something. I hope you're getting me so far. Now, to break it down further, the most important thing to understand in trying to differentiate God's world from our world is to understand what God said, what Jesus said to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, in John chapter 4 verse 24, that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So if God is a spirit, it means he is different from us. And therefore we need to understand the difference between spirit and and flesh. We need to understand the difference between the world of spirits and the world of flesh. Let me read you a scripture. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now, very interesting here. The Bible here is giving us a clear distinction between things that are seen and things that are not visible. So there is the visible, which was created by the invisible. What that means is in order for the invisible to create the visible and say that it is good, then the invisible should be able, should have, should have the ability to see the visible. The invisible 
should be able to see the things which appear. And when God saw the light, he saw that it was good. Right? When God saw the light, he saw that it was good. So the Bible here is describing to us two different worlds. Now I want you to take note of one word there. It says, by faith, we understand that the worlds, plural, were framed by the word of God. Now to understand this, let me explain it this way. Think about it. When you go to bed every night, you lay in your bed. You could be there for eight hours. You went to bed at 10 p.m., wake up at 6 a.m. I, I hope that amounts to eight hours. Uh, but yeah, you could be in bed for eight hours and maybe you're sleeping next to someone in bed. They can physically touch you. Maybe you're snoring. They can hear you snore. And for some of you, you sleep so deep that they can shake you and you just be unresponsive. Hope you cough it up. Oh, this coffee is good. Now, while you are in bed for those eight hours, fast asleep, snoring, drooling, you are very much present in that bed. Your neighbor on the bed can tell that you are here. Yet at the very same time, you are very present and conscious in another place that you call your dreams. You are so present there that you can come back when you wake up and describe the conversations you had, the people you saw, some of their faces, some of the places you went to. In your dreams, you can even go to places you've never been to in your real life. You can see faces of people you've never met before in your real life. This shows you that there is a duality of reality happening once you lay your head on your bed. I like how the Bible in the book of Daniel puts it. I had visions of my head upon my bed. Because Daniel understood that when he goes to sleep, he gets into visions of his head. These visions are an extension of a different reality that you get into when you get into sleep. Now, the existence of your dream world that in that moment is very tangible. I mean, some of you have dreamt that you're eating meat in your dream. You were handling it physically, biting it, chewing it. You can remember what it tasted like, yet it happened in your dream. Some of your dreams even come to pass in your real life. Have you ever thought about that? Some of your dreams happened there first and then came and happened in this world. This is showing you that there is a separation of worlds where people can exist and not mingle. There is a, a divide, a chasm between that world and this world. The only way you can access your dream world is if you go through sleep. Sleep is the doorway into the dream world where you could develop your senses and and begin to experience visions and daydreams. But that's a story for another day. But just imagine how that you are able to separate and distinguish your real life from your life in dreams. In the same way, the Lord created worlds, some of spirit and some of flesh. Well, this one is of flesh. We don't know how many world of spirits there are, but we know that there are worlds. So God created the worlds. He framed the worlds by the word of God. Now, in order to understand the difference between the spirit world or the world of spirits and the world of flesh, we we'll need to understand exactly what is that one component that differentiates them. And Jesus Christ explained it to us in John chapter 6, verse 63. Let's read it together. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. 
Now, Jesus Christ here is giving an answer to an important question, even without the hearers having asked it. He said, you are clean because of the words I speak to you. And then he says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Now take, for instance, I came to visit you and I say to you, the words that I speak to you are water. What that would mean is if you had a glass right next to you and you felt thirsty, in order to quench that thirst, what you need are my words. If the Euphrates River was drying up like it is, what you would need are my words. They would come and look for me to go and speak over the Euphrates River in order for it to be filled again because my words are water. In the same way, Jesus is saying, my words are spirit. Now, remember that this same Jesus said, God is a spirit. If God is a spirit and not the spirit, it means God is not the only spirit. It means that spirit is a material by which certain beings and worlds are created. For example, we live on planet Earth and our bodies were made from the dust of the ground and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his body the breath of life and man became a living soul, right? So our bodies were made from the dust of the ground, which means that our bodies are a summation of the material that you find in Earth. So the Earth that we inhabit, that we live on, that we are glued to, produced its inhabitants. So God and the earth produced you and I, the inhabitants of the earth, right? And everything that defines our lives, be it food, clothes, drink, shelter, work, think of every field of work, somehow it came from the ground. It's all connected to the ground. Everything, the inhabitants of the earth, the inhabitants of the earth and everything they need for life all came from within the earth. Wow. So if Jesus Christ, in other words, said, if Jesus Christ instead said, the words I speak to you are earth and they are life. What God, what Jesus is telling you that my words are the material that created you. But then Jesus, thank God, did not say that his words are earth or water, but his words are spirit. Now it is these very words, the word of God, that are the material of God. God's being, his makeup, his stature, the material that makes God, God, is spirit, which is the word of God. So the word of God is the source of the material of God. And what God did was that he got from his own material, spirit, and created worlds of spirits. So we know, for example, that there are different angelic races, different angelic worlds. We have the cherubims, the seraphim, the orphanim. We have the, the, the angelic hosts. Right? Different angels. When you read the book of Daniel, uh, an angel came down and cursed King Nebuchadnezzar with madness, gave him the mind of an animal for seven years. And this was not God. This was a decree from the watchers. So we know that there are different classes of beings, different worlds. And then we have the world of flesh, right? So now Jesus here is telling you that the words that he speaks, not only can they form up the material of all these worlds, his words give life to all 
these worlds. That's why the Bible in the book of Colossians says, but unto us there is but one God, the Father in heaven, from whom all things came. It means out of God came everything. And then it further says, but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom. The Bible in the book of Colossians also says that whether they be principalities, thrones, rulers, powers, all things were created by him and for him in reference to Jesus Christ. Now, if God created all things, the Bible also tells us that nothing was created without Christ. How do we reconcile the two? Jesus answered it there. It was because God used his words to create everything. This is why the Bible in Hebrews also tells us that Jesus is the express image, the mold of God. What makes God God? That's why the Bible in the book of Philippians also tells us that Jesus thought it not robbery, though possessing the qualities that make God God. Wow. So God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So God is in the world of spirits. Now, in closing, we being human beings made from planet Earth, from the material of the earth. Imagine if we then took one component of the earth, let's say gold, and we create a whole world of gold. The beings that live in that world came from the gold. And everything that defines their lives, their food, their clothing, their shelter, their work, everything that defines their lives came from the gold element. This is what it means when the Bible differentiates spirit and flesh. We usually like to think that spirit is intangible. We can't touch spirit, that our hand will go through spirit. When in fact, spirit is simply invisible to us, but it is the source from where we came. So it is like we, the beings of the earth, having created a whole different world out of gold, we can determine the parameters. We will never expose this gold, expose this gold to certain amounts of heat because it will change. This is us. We are limited. We are stuck to the ground. We have laws that govern our world. So differentiating the world of spirits from the world of flesh can help you understand the differences in existence between us and God. So God is self-existing because Jesus said this very important thing. He said, as the father has life within himself, so has he given to, to the son to have life within himself. So God is unkillable. You can't kill him if you tried. He has life within himself. He has never stopped producing life. That is why we all came from him. So God is self-existing. He does not need to have started or to end. There's no external something outside of himself that he needs to be plugged into in order to have life. The life comes from within himself. All right, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that notification bell and share. We shall continue next week with the gifts of the spirit on Bible Talks. For now, I hope this digests and sinks in. See you on Monday. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.